BeastNet is brought to you by James Safety Services in partnership with OCR Bunny and OCR Strong. Here we discuss all things OCR and fitness related. Welcome to BeastNet. So how have you been? Ugh, it's like life keeps punching me in the face every single week. It's not good. No, it's not. Like I've had truck repair after truck repair after truck repair. Then my computer dies. My watch dies. My bike gets stolen. Like I just want it all to be over. That doesn't sound fun at all. No, it hasn't been a fun couple of months. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Well, hopefully it gets better from here. I mean, you know. Yeah, I'm hoping I win this Powerball tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, don't we all? I know, right? Yeah. I keep seeing that and I'm like, I normally don't play, but. Uh... Right, same. Like, I, I have a limit. Like, it has to get up to like 700 million before I'm like, okay, maybe, maybe I maybe. can throw my hat in. Because, <laughs> you know. You can't win <laughs> if you don't play. Yeah, exactly. I don't need it if it's only like 100 mil. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just not worth wasting the money at that point. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> What's it at now? Like nine something? Oh, it it's over a billion. Oh, is it over a billion now? Okay. Yeah. I'd say I really haven't. I mean, I kind of went into town today, but it was just I don't know if you'd call it town, but <laughs> it's just a little area with you know. Yeah. So we went to a wine tasting. Okay. Today. It was a wine oh, tasting. Fun. Yeah, but it was like a little, it reminded me, I don't know if you've ever been to Key West, but that's what this little town no. reminded This little area reminded me. It was just a bunch of like five or six block radius with a bunch of little shops. Right. Okay. So, but, but it's only, it's about 15, 20 miles away. So that's the other okay. thing. We're still trying to get used to where we're at because we're, normally we've always been like kind of out in the woods, but still close to town. Right. Like most of our lives. And right now we're not. We're what the closest town to us is probably 10, 15 miles. Wow. And it's, okay. And it's just like a little itty bitty town that like but there's like it's really weird in Texas. They have a lot of like little groceries, like not grocery stores, but little like convenience stores. Okay. So like bodegas? All, kind of, yeah. Like all over okay. the place. So okay. in between here and town, there's probably like four or five of those. So we could hit those if you just need something quick. But I mean, if you right. need actual like food to make, it's, and even then the town that's close to us, it's, a, it's actually called Cut and Shoot. But the name of the town is Cut and <laughs> Shoot. I'm like, really? But, but okay. that's just, there's not even really a grocery store there. The gro closest grocery store is probably 20 miles. Wow. I don't know how yeah. you do it. I have a grocery store at the end of my street. The city of Boston prides itself on having like a legitimate grocery store in every single neighborhood. Yeah. Yeah, we're out there a little ways. And it's gorgeous though. I mean, I love it. I mean, my backyard right now, because there's no other houses up here yet. It's just woods. That's awesome. You know, and it's it's gorgeous. So yeah, we're loving it so far. We did have to buy a new car because... I needed something with better gas mileage. Okay, yeah. Because I'm driving almost 60 miles each way to work. Wow. But it's an hour drive. No. Well, yeah, because there's nothing between. You don't well, have to stop for anything. <laughs> and they know how to make freeways here. And like where I grew you know, Washington, it's like every freeway goes to the middle of town. Yeah. They actually have the freeways. We can, I can go, I go, it would be probably a 40 mile drive. But I go a little out of the way to go around Houston because I'm actually okay. I'm, nor I'm northeast of Houston and my job southwest of Houston. Oh, okay. So I drive all the way around it. Okay. So you're like way down there. No. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You're not going to have to deal with the winter ever again. No, not at all. <laughs> it's like today, I think it's 92. <laughs> that is a huge difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because one of my friends posted this morning that he was sitting on his porch with his wife and it was 41 degrees in Seattle. And I'm like, no, no, thank you. <laughs> I would prefer the 41 degrees than the 92. For years, I would have. But actually, recently, I've been getting more and more 
and like the 92 we were out walking around today in town no problem so do you did you've done a lot since last time we talked it's i've a done while. a lot it you has do. been a while yeah because with my move and everything else it's just you know things kept getting in the way and yeah it's been you've done a lot yeah we, let's see we talked after toughest mm -hmm. then i did savage how was and that then savage was good um, i wanted i want to do one i thought about it dallas is next weekend like, yes next weekend but the problem is i'm doing the ultra oh okay which is like the weekend i it's not i don't think it's the weekend after it's two weeks after two weeks still, later yeah it's like i'm supposed to the ultra with more heart than scars taking a, a you know an athlete through on the ultra and then like two weeks after that, I go back to Dallas and do World's Toughest. So I would say if you wanted to do Savage, I Savage isn't going to destroy your ultra. Um, obviously, it's the fact of getting to Dallas, um, yeah. which is probably the toughest part. But, you know, if you were to get up there, I would say just do multiple laps to get some good mileage and then go into your taper rate right from that. Um, but, yeah, having every two weeks being in Dallas for the next month yeah. or so that's a lot it is and i mean it's one of those things a lot of people forget like they're like oh but you're in texas i'm like yes but texas is huge yeah <laughs> yeah see like me in boston i was able to drive up to the lakes region in new hampshire on friday and somebody was like oh are you going to syracuse tomorrow meaning saturday and i was like meh no i think that might be a little too far but like in, in any given day i'd be like yeah, I have no pri problem driving from like Boston to like Syracuse, Buffalo, like hearing you're in Texas. It's like, okay, I'm technically probably closer to a lot of things than you are mm -hmm. in relation to Texas and New England. Oh, yeah. I was like, one of my, one of my friends was talking about another episode, uh, podcast I do about like Scotland and, you know, Loch Ness Monster. Yep. And we're talking about like in comparison, the United Kingdom would fit in the state of Texas. Oh yeah, you know, and I and I never thought of it that way. Like the state of Texas is bigger than the entire like England, Scottish, Scotland, and Ireland put together. Yeah. So it's yeah. huge, but yeah, Dallas I think is three hours, and it's just three weekends in a row, and it's not one like three hours is just at that point where. To drive, run, come back in a day is just too much. Yeah. No, I get that. Three hours from here would be like going to Killington. Yeah. So, I mean, I've done it. I have gone up to Killington for a day and turned around and come back at night. No. Yeah. Um, it's not fun. No. And I mean, I've done it. I did it when, you know, uh, Spartan, when I was in, you know, Washington, when they had the, mm -hmm. the Portland Sprint or the Northwest Sprint is what it was originally called. I would occasionally, if I needed to, there was a couple of times I did it where I drove down in the morning, did the Sprint, got back in the car and drove back afterwards. Yeah. But that's a Sprint, you know, and this like, you know, I feel Savage would be a little more because I'm not going to do one lap. I'm going to do multiples if I can. And then, you know, the Ultra is definitely more than a Sprint. Definitely. Um, I mean, with Savage, their full Savage is probably about five to six miles. And then if you do the Blitz on top, that's like three. So it's like an old school Spartan Super. Yeah. Hmm. It's not it's bad. not bad. Not bad at all. Yeah. But I think, yeah, three weeks and, you know, every other week going to yeah. Dallas is a bit much. I mean, eventually we'll get there. And I, one thing is, too, is I did find out that Spartan just announced that Houston is getting a trifecta, which is funny that I look it up. It's still two hours from here. Really? Hmm? <laughs> so nowhere near Houston. No, but that's normal. I mean, I yeah. remember when Vegas yeah. was, you know, two, two and a half hours. It was yeah. closer to stay in Utah than it was in Vegas to go to the Vegas race. Right. Or as we called it, Vegasona. Yeah. It was Vegas, but it was really in, in Arizona because everyone always makes fun because I want to do like at least a 5K in every state. Yep. And I don't consider that I've ever done a race in Vegas or in Nevada. <laughs> and everyone's like, but you've done Vegas. And I'm like, yes, but Vegas was in Arizona. 
Should have gone to World's Toughest Mudder. I should have. I should have. Well, so yeah, yeah, so it's definitely one of those those weird things. I did do six more states on my 5K on the drive here. Oh, awesome. Yeah, I got six more states in, on 5Ks. I stopped in Idaho, Colorado, Wyoming, Oklahoma, and New Mexico. And there's okay. one more in there. So I'm missing one. I don't remember what the other one was, but there were six. Now, are these official 5Ks or? They were virtuals. Okay. No, they, they were virtuals, but I want to do like an official one eventually, but it was just right. kind of like, but yeah, I just stopped and it was, we did, I would pull over in a park. One of them I actually pulled over, it was like a picnic area and just ran laps. Yeah. Okay. Like a 5K. So I did a virtual 5K in six different places. That's awesome. A couple of them, one of them was, but I did three, three on Saturday, two on Sunday, and then finished the last one Monday morning. Oh, awesome. So Monday was Oklahoma. Okay. Good. Yeah. I've been trying to get some more running in, but it's been tough with the workout or the, the moving. Um, so I figured that's enough of a workout lifting most of those boxes. But and yeah. then my new job, I usually end each day with eight thousand or more steps from Look. walking the warehouse. Okay, yeah. So I make sure I get up every hour and go walk. Good. That's very good. No. So you did, since we've talked, you did, you know, Survivor, or not Survivor, what was it? I just said it. God, my brain is not working. I don't blame you. Mine is not either. <laughs> it's been, yeah. But, so you did a couple, then you did, what was the other one? You did Killington, didn't you? So I did, after Savage, I went out and I ran Spartan, New England, or Boston, or wherever, which was at the exact same venue as Savage, but somehow they didn't utilize the same trails at all, which was phenomenal. Oh, that's awesome. Um, Savage had still left some obstacles behind, but we didn't actually go really anywhere near where Savage had put their race with the exception of the first mile. So it really was great to see um, Spartan back at that venue and that they were able to just explore. So that was a great venue, great weekend. I mean, it wasn't hard. I think at least with how Spartan sets up their races, I don't understand how they don't build up to like their big races in terms of like location. They're like, oh, mm -hmm. well, because Killington is so hard, we want the other races in New England to be not as challenging. So, you know, people have variety. It's like, but yeah. the people that are going to go and race Killington are looking to train for Killington. This race is one month before. Why would you not go and seek out some kind of elevation somewhere, you know, giving us a race of 200 feet of elevation when Killington is going to be 6,500. Yeah. Um, that's, it's not doing your customers any favors. Um, so again, like I love the venue that they were at. It's an OG venue. It's where I ran my first like mud run Spartan. Um, so it was great to be back and it, you know, I'm extra spoiled because it's like one town over from where my parents live. So I can just go stay with them, drive down, super simple. Um, but it's in no way challenging or nor does it prepare anybody for Killington. And that's been one of my biggest issues with some of the races. There's some that it's like you have the ones, you know, Killington. And I always heard, you know, I've done Montana and everyone always considers Montana one of the tougher ones. And then you get other ones like Seattle, where it was flat. Right. Flat, flat. And I'm thinking we're in Washington, Western Washington, that's yeah. known for its hills and its mountains. And you found the flattest place. Mm -hmm. I'm like, really? You know, and that's one of the things too, like here in Texas, I came here and it was so funny. I went and did a couple of rides with a good friend of mine who lives down here. Me and her and she's like, oh, let's go do some rides so we can train and, you know, you can get used to because I finally had my my good bike fit to me. Good. 
and we went for a ride and she's like oh we're gonna go to this place it's, it's there's some hills so you know it's, it's hilly it's good for training and i'm looking at it like that's not a hill it's like a bump. <laughs> right like that's a bump and she's like that's right she's like i've been to seattle i know what you consider a hell yeah this isn't a hell <laughs> like yeah but it's good for training but it is but still and that's the hard part because i got my bike plenty fit but i'm not used to aero so i'm trying to get more used to riding an arrow which is so different yeah so but yeah i know it's one of those things i've always wanted to do you know kellington but that's what i've heard is if you don't train for elevation you're hosed and i can see yeah. where people from like here there's nowhere to train for elevation right and i mean it's just baffling to me to hear people from you know texas and florida going to races like a Killington and they just get completely smacked in the face because you know the first climb is more than they would ever see running across their entire state and you know you hear people when you're out on Killington during the first climb going is this the death march and it's like no this isn't he'll know when you hit the death march it like we don't mean to you know, scare anybody, but the death march is the easiest climb you'll see at Killington because you know exactly what you're going to expect. It is one straight mile to the top. You don't stop climbing. You look up, you might see some false peaks where, you know, you can't see anybody anymore, but then it just keeps going up. And mm -hmm. it's like the hardest parts of Killington are the climbing and the descending off the death march because all of the you know technical terrain the rocks the roots you know you have horrible you know percentages going uphill and downhill and if you're not actually trained to go up at these steep grades your body is going to be a mess and that's what we were seeing um I found it really fascinating. If you look at the results from the North American championships in age group, because it was that, that age group championship race, if you compare the results of those to the national series for age group, some of the guys and girls who competed in the national series didn't necessarily do as good as they had hoped. And it's mm -hmm. because when Spartan goes and puts their national series on the exact same venues every single year, you're not getting the same, you know, technical terrain. You're not getting the same grades. Yeah. Utah is hard. Nobody mm -hmm. is going to sit here and say Utah is a cakewalk, but Utah technical terrain versus Killington technical terrain, totally different. I remember running Utah and it was, you know, it was a, a solid grade, but it was a gradual incline all the way up to the top. And the last time I ran Utah was the super for the national series out in like 2019 or something. So it's been mm -hmm. a little bit, but at that race, you went uphill for four miles, you went downhill for four miles and, you know, West coast elevation is a lot of switchbacks you're not going straight up to the top of the mountain but east coast you go straight up to the top of the mountain so when people are seeking out more of these national series races they're not getting the same kind of elevation that you're gonna see out here in killington and it really messed some people up this year I could definitely see that because that was like the one thing you would see a lot of times with Montana. Yeah. When you do Montana, Montana's like that. Where usually, and I, I agree, on the West Coast, most places like when I do Sisu and stuff like that, when you go up a hill, it's switchbacks back and forth. Yep. You're not just trudging straight up a hill. And that's how Montana is. It's just trudging straight up a hill. I remember one year they had to cut the sandbag in half part way through because people were just dropping the sandbags and giving up because they made it it was i think almost a half a mile with the sandbag straight up the side of a hill and you just kept going 
That's exactly was- how it was in Killington. It was on the half pipe. You should get go to the bottom and you go all the way up around and come on back down. And it was so incredibly steep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's what people aren't used to. They're used to that switchback. So yeah. when all of a sudden you have those straight, just trudges straight up, you know, it's like there was always a hill in Montana that we always called the FU Steve Hill because Steve Hammond was the one who originally like the first couple of years was the, the, you know, the race director that, you know, designed the course and there was no point to this hill. Yeah. You went straight up this hill forever. And there was like two different spots that there was false, you know, peak. Mm-hmm. You're like, oh, it's almost there. And then it just flattened for like 20 feet and then started going right back up again. Yep. And we call it the FU Steep Hill because you, you, you can get it pretty much what we mean by that. But you got yep. to the top of the hill and you just went right back down the other side. Oh, yeah. That's exactly how it was with Killington. You go up, you go down. You go up, mm-hmm. you go down, and like the mile 10 climb was arguably the worst of the climbs. And it's when, you know, you had just come down, you came around, you go through where typically you would, you went like over this little bridge thing where the death marchers climb underneath and, and you pass over the people that are going to the death march. And you're saying, you know, have have a good march. And they're like, is that what this is? Yes, you're about to death march. And then we turn the corner and then it's, oh, we are going straight back up again. And there was on that climb, finally, a little bit of technical climbing as well. So it wasn't just a straight up, but because we were so used to straight up, straight down, once we saw that technical stuff, people are like, holy hell. How are we supposed to do this? This is so hard. Um, It definitely got a lot of people, but I walked away from Killington and I said, that was the easiest Killington course I've ran to date. It was 6,500 feet of elevation. Yeah, probably more elevation than most of the races that I've ran out there. And again, I haven't ran Killington since 2019, Um, but it, like the, there was much more runnable terrain. I was able to run all of the descents. There were spots where you could actually run, you know, whether it was like access roads or smaller flat sections. Yeah, you'd go up, down, up, down. There were just a little bits of around that you could run or lesser grade as you're continuing up. And, you know, I tell my clients, run when you can at Killington. And Mm -hmm. so to myself, I was thinking, can I run right now? Yeah, I can run right now. Uh, So I would run. But so many people underestimate what Killington is and it just completely destroyed them. I could see that because I I think you made a good point. The last time you did Killington was 2019. Ever since what I started in 15. Mm Mm-hmm. And I get what they're doing. I get what the whole idea of trying to, you know, make everything the same. But I do miss the old, it's 13 plus. Yeah. So me you too. didn't know. I mean, the first race I ever did, you know, I think we've talked about this, was Montana in 2015. I did the Beast because, as I said before, I don't do research and didn't realize what a Beast was. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I kept seeing the 13 plus and I'm like, well, I've done a half marathon. 13 is fine. Well, that beast was what they called the founders race. Yeah. They don't even do it anymore. Race. Yep. And I have the that special medal from doing a founders race. But it was, I think, depending on who you ask, you know, of course, as always, with the the distance, it's anywhere between 20 and 24 miles was that yeah. beast. And it was I wow. saw obstacles I've never seen before, never seen again. You know, stuff they they threw everything at us at that race. But you'll never see that again. Yeah. It's going to be 13 to 14 miles every race. And coming off of Killington, you know, I did cross the finish line and a staffer said, how was it? And I said, that was the easiest race I've ever ran at Killington. And Mm -hmm. it, it breaks my heart to not see the swim, to not see the Tarzan swing. Yeah, they had ape hanger. One ape hanger is a Palmerton signature obstacle. I don't care if you know 
people are loving seeing it elsewhere. There is an allure to Palmerton Ape Hanger. The Palmerton Ape Hanger is always going to be the toughest of the Ape Hangers. Ape Hanger is the treat for you to go and embrace the suck at Palmerton. Mm -hmm. If I don't have to go and climb that mountain in a hundred plus degree weather, I, I shouldn't get the joy of trying the ape hanger. That's just my opinion. Come at me if you want. I believe the ape hanger needs to stay at Palmerton. It doesn't have the same allure on any random Spartan course at this point, especially when they're, as they're still trying to figure out and fumble through, is there a rope or not? How far apart are the rungs on the ladder monkey bar thing? I mean, it, they haven't figured it out. Yes. Yeah. The Killington one was probably the hardest you'll see outside of Palmerton, but it's not the same ape hanger that you see in Palmerton. No. Um, but yeah, I crossed that finish line and the staff member said, how was it? And I said, that was the easiest Killington I've ever ran. I have never ran so much at Killington. And he turned to me and said, can you please tell Joe that? Please. And he pointed behind me and said, Joe is right behind you. I beg of you, just tell that to Joe. So I turned around and I said, hey, Joe, remember me? I was the boxing coach for your kids. Oh, hey, how's it going? How was the race? It's like, that was the easiest Killington I've ever ran. Said, we need to get back to K1 because we need the swim. We need the Tarzan swing. Oh, that's the plan. That's the plan. I don't believe what he says at all. We're still waiting for the gladiators to come back. Yeah. We haven't seen these wolves. So I am not buying this whole Joe saying we're getting back to K1. We're going to go swim. We're going to Tarzan swing. But I needed to tell him that. But you know what he told me? Or what he said to me as soon as I said that was the easiest Killington course. He pointed behind me and said, okay, well, go do an extra lap then. And they had a long loop up and down the mountain after the race. He is now doing this whole extra mile thing. Would you go the extra mile after the race? One. So... New England was the first race I ran this year. Did they start Armageddon before that? I don't know. I don't think so. Armageddon is before the race. What's Armageddon? I don't think I've seen it because I haven't done Spartan at all this year. It's a barbed wire crawl before you go over the start line or the starting wall to get into the corral. So you have to barbed wire crawl and then jump the wall into the starting corral. Then you race. You finish the race and then you can go and climb the mountain again after you finish. I don't know about you, but to me, when I'm racing, I'm worried about what's between the start line and the finish line. Yeah. If you want to improve your race, don't worry about what's before the start line, what's after the finish line. Make the race harder on the course. I turned to him and I said, no, thank you. He said, but you just said it was the easiest killing to date. I said, yeah. And I also bombed all of those downhills because it was so easy. I just put my effort in on the course. I don't need to put an effort in after I'm done. I don't yeah. need to go and climb a mountain again, just to earn a little pin. If you expect me to put in more of an effort, put that on the course. Don't worry about it after the course is done. Yeah. And that's, I don't know, it's been one of the things that I've been having issues with with them is it seems it's getting, we started this because it was hard. Mm, yep. And it's not. Right, exactly. It's not hard. Yeah. The, the things that they're making hard, they don't need to make hard. We don't need rock grips on Stairway to Sparta. We don't need a slick surface on the Olympus. We don't need a circle around the spear throw target. These are obstacles that were already plenty challenging for a majority of the people. Mm -hmm. You're making things harder for no reason. They're, it's 
Like it's not requiring extra skill. No. I beat Olympus at Killington because the first two, three boards were the typical plywood. And then by the time it switched to the slick surface, I had enough momentum that I could keep going. But people see the slick surface. And one of the things they think is, I'm just going to go take the penalty loop. This slick surface is not worth it to me. I don't need to face plan into this wall. My feet yeah. can't stay on. What? Where is the skill in that? Yeah, if you fight enough with your upper body, you can stay on. You're not getting anything from your legs out of it. I promise you, if you look back at just the tip, what the original type of obstacle before Olympus came in, it was a plywood. You used your feet and your arms together. Olympus, mm -hmm. you can't use your feet anymore. No. Stairway to Sparta. Supposedly, they have ones that have like the red step on some of them. But for somebody like me, five foot two, you have a slick surface where normally I would run, jump and grab and I would push off from the wall with that slick surface. I can't push off from the wall. I'm too short to stand and grab the rock climbing grips. I, If I jump and try to grab the rock climbing grips, it's hit or miss at best. But I'm not about to tear my hands because I try to jump and grab a rock climbing grip and my hand slips off. I mm -hmm. could nail it no problem when it was plywood. No. It's not worth the energy expenditure when the penalty loops are so easy anyways. No, it's true. I mean, that's one of the biggest things that, you know, we've had the argument, we won't go into the the, the mandatory completion that it should be because we both have had this, yeah. this discussion. We, we, we agree, but I, I, the idea with like the ape hangers and stuff like that, I think, I mean, if you wanted the, the you know, the whole idea is, to get it, you know, so supposedly a million people off the couch, blah, blah, blah. We all know it's about money and dollar signs. If you really wanted to, what they should do to get people like us to go to other venues, make a specific obstacle that you only see at one venue. Yeah, exactly. All of a sudden, I'm like, oh, because that's why I want to go to places like where the ape hanger was, because I've always wanted to go there because I want to do the ape hanger. But now it's like, oh, yeah. well, now it's at Killington. Who knows when it's going to be at somewhere else? It won't be the same one, but still an ape hanger, you know, and that's what I think. They should have a different like, OK, you want to see this obstacle? You have to go to this course. Yeah. Palmerton, Killington, they had their signature obstacles. Mm -hmm. You go to uh, last time I raced over in the UK and granted it's been a little while, but they had signature obstacles that you'd only see in the UK. Like yeah. that exclusivity is going to pull more people off the couch. I don't need to run the same race only in a different location. I've mm -hmm. done that. I put my time in. I collected my little trifectas. They mean nothing at this point because the race isn't changing. I'm not sitting here saying, oh my gosh, do you know what I did to earn this beast medal? Well, I did the same thing that I did at this venue, only maybe there was a little bit more elevation or maybe the terrain was a little bit more technical. Mm -hmm. and, and that's one of the biggest issues. So I, I that was one of the things when I did Hawaii the very first time. They had mm -hmm. obstacles at the, the the venue that were just there and have were there the whole time. And they were ones I'd never seen before, you know, and different than other places. Mm -hmm. But then by the time the last time I was in Hawaii, which I didn't even do it this year, um, the last time I was there, it was just the same obstacles we see everywhere else. Well, they canceled Hawaii this year. Yeah. So nobody went. But yeah, yeah. Um, you know, they released the OCRWC map literally the same day this whole news came out about the OCRWC Spartan merger thing. But you, I looked at that map and said, there is nothing new here. You only have 2,200 feet of elevation. Last year in Stratton, we had four to 5,000. Mammoth is supposed to be a bigger mountain. So you're not giving us elevation. You're not giving us any new obstacles. Oh, yeah. And by the way, Spartan is taking over and you have a dunk wall now before mile four when the temperatures are going to be super cold in the morning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
let's go through a dunk wall and then stand around and have to fight for obstacles for a couple of hours. Hypothermia, that's Spartan's favorite obstacle. Like I, when I heard about the Spartan buyout, it was probably May and I didn't tell anybody because, you know, I can keep a secret from time to time, but I hadn't paid for my flights yet. I had paid for the race, but I was thinking, you know, maybe I just eat the cost of the race. I don't want to go out to it. Already Mammoth is impossible to get to. There is no easy travel out there. Then Spartan's taking over. So we know they're going to tank this. Like, what am I doing? I hate it. Racing at altitude. Why am I doing this? But I was able to find reasonable travel, thankfully, and I'm going to go. And I am going to race it. And I'm going to, you know, I'm going in optimistic saying maybe this is going to be okay. But seeing that map, it's the same sh- different day. Sorry, I swore. Um, <laughs> but like what are we going to see? Are we going to have to go through a barbed wire crawl at the start line and an extra mile at the finish line? Cause I don't want it. I want that difficulty on course. Yeah. And that's it. I mean, it's for the first couple of years I did Spartan. And one of the things that was huge, I love Spartan. Um, but there was something different almost every year you would go and there'd be some new obstacle you'd never seen before. There'd be some new thing. Yeah. There's innovation. And in the last couple of years, I mean, you can blame COVID, you can blame whatever, you can blame whatever you want, but I blame Joe. Yeah, I do too. But <laughs> <laughs> the last couple of years, there's been no innovation. It's been the same obstacles. We haven't seen new ones. Um, and like you said, I'm doing the same race here that I did there, just with a little bit different terrain. Yeah. And like I said, the only reason I'm doing even the ones that I'm doing this year is because I'm doing them with more hard than scars and I'm helping somebody go through them. And if it wasn't for that, I had no intention of doing any Spartans this year. Yeah. I only raced the New England and Killington weekend because I was teaching the obstacle specialist course. Mm -hmm. Um, And oh, I can I can rant on that, too, but I might. I mean, I will be at Fenway. I don't know if I'm racing or not because it's the week after World's Toughest Mudder, but I'm going because it's in my neighborhood. It's right down the street. Yeah. I don't get to wake up in my own bed and go race very often. So I'm going to. But when something like Killington loses its allure, when it no longer feels like that authentic Spartan, there's a problem and Mm -hmm. it did not feel like that at all. They started us in such a bad spot on the mountain. The only things you could see from the festival area was the start and the finish line. They would take off, go run 13 miles, come back. You would see the horrendous sandbag carry. Then they would go into the, you know, gauntlet to finish out the race. What kind of spectator, particularly a spectator for the ultra is Mm -hmm. going to pay 20, $25 to spend eight, 10, 12, 14 hours in that festival area. When all they can see of their runner is them starting and them finishing. There wasn't an easy access to K1 to get over by where the death march is if you got there the only obstacles you could see were like armor like nobody wants to see that then if again if you got over there you could take the gondola up to the top of the death march but because you couldn't get there from the festival area you didn't have people sitting at the top of the death march cheering you on quite like they used to there used to be The New England Spartans up there handing out brownies, cookies, candy. They would have nips with Fireball, Jameson. It was a giant party at the top of the death march as people are coming up thinking they couldn't make it another step 
and you were hugging them, giving them treats, alcohol, whatever they wanted, because they made it up the death march. And when you don't get that, where is the fun of Killington? It's definitely not down at the swim in the Tarzan swing like it used to. It was not a spectator friendly course. There was no fun to be had on it. It was just a suffer fest where, you know, you had to make your own fun. Yeah, there wasn't family, friends, anybody there cheering you on because they could not get to where you were. And that was a big misstep by Spartan. Sounds like it. And and that's been, I mean, that's what's always killed me. You have to pay to be a spectator to walk in. Yeah. You know, and luckily for me for years, because I was part of, you know, the street team and everything else for a long time that usually my wife could just get in because I was part of the street team. Right. So I would get a, a pass so she could get right. in. But now it's like, I'm not paying 20 bucks, 25 bucks, whatever it is now. I don't even know what it is. So that she could go in there and not see anything. Right. Exactly. What? So she can go and hang out with the vendors. Yeah. She can walk around and talk to Ford or insert sponsor here. Yeah. Like, oh, you can probably get a free energy drink. Yay. It's worth the $20. Um, it's so bad. And that's why I had such a big problem with teaching the obstacle specialist course as well, because we meet right there at the festival area. And from there, you just go straight up. There's no gondola to take you to the top of the mountain. I walked in that morning and they said, I'm going to be honest with you. None of the obstacles are ready for you. I said, what do you mean? They're like, you can maybe get to this up. Obst- you can maybe do a crawl. You can do the Atlas ball. I think maybe the car, the A-frame is going to be ready by the time you get there. I can fill the dunk wall for you. I'm like, I need the spear. Oh, well, the spear's done, but you can only use one lane. I'm like, oh, that's cool. I have 15 participants. Let's let's go up to the spear and only use one lane. We had to hike to get to all of the obstacles. The first question I asked is, is there a gondola to get us up there? Because we have people running the ultra. We have people running the beast tomorrow. They can't kill their legs, but we need to go see some obstacles. Oh no, there's no gondola. Okay, if I drive to K1, Oh no, there's no gondola. You can go to K1. It's got the armor. You can teach them how to do the armor, but you, the gondola is out. Like, so these people are paying 150 plus dollars to get on course to try out these obstacles and you don't have anything ready. They're going to have to hike the entire course to see the obstacles that they want to see, you're not giving them any accessibility to this. And, oh yeah, I'm going to have to kill a couple hours of our time just to buy enough time for you to finish the obstacles that we can walk to. Like Spartan is sitting here threatening to cancel all of their obstacle specialist courses because people don't sign up. I had 15 people sign up. That is Mm -hmm. one of the larger obstacle specialist courses and how do you repay them? Oh, you can't get on any obstacles. You have to, why no one would sign up? You have to hike a couple thousand feet of elevation just to get to the sprint obstacles. Don't expect to get to the beast obstacles unless you climb. You're going to have to go the full 6,000 feet of elevation just to get up to the beast obstacles. But have at it. Which is going to be one of those things. Those people are never going to sign up for it again. Yeah. And then whenever they're on any Facebook group or anything like that, which, you know, Spartan pushes their Facebook groups. Yeah. Someone's going to ask about it. Oh, hey, is this worth it? And they're going to be like, no, this is the stupidest thing ever. Yeah. The race director doesn't have or the I don't want to blame the race director. It the build crew doesn't have the obstacles built in time. They don't have accessibility for you to get out onto the course. 
blah, blah, blah. I will say I heard they didn't have very many people on their build crew because people didn't show up to work. They only had like two or three people to build the festival area on Friday before the race. Like these problems are deeper than what we're seeing. The, these problems are with Spartan staff. People don't want to work for Spartan right now. We have to start thinking and asking why. What is going on that Spartan can't get the build crew to build the obstacles they need? And if they can't get the staff to build Killington, a championship race, why the hell are they spending money on obstacle course racing world championships? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's not, and it's one of those things because normally they, you know, it's they re rely on the, the volunteers. Yeah. In many ways. And right now, nobody wants to volunteer because of the way they've treated volunteers. Yeah. I mean, to get a free race, it used to be like eight hours. Mm -hmm. Now it's 12. And then they'll do whatever they do to try and convince you to stay even longer. Yeah. And most of the time, they don't treat them very well. We used to, I remember when I first volunteered, we got free food. Yeah. Now you're lucky if you get a squished sandwich. Oh, yeah. They, most of the time, they won't come around and check on you. No, you don't get a Swiss, you, you might get a Swiss sandwich. I have friends, it was a couple of years ago, who almost missed their race because they were going to race the afternoon race. And because they had no one to replace them, they just didn't send anyone, never sent anyone else to go get them. Yeah. So they almost, they ended up leaving like an hour after the last group because they're like, we volunteered so we could do this. So we're going anyway, you know, and it's one of those things and it's the way they've treated, like I said, I used to, and I won't go into why, but I used to be street team. I'll never be part of that team again never be part of an ambassador yeah. never any of it because of the way that they treated me and others and there will yeah. be never you yeah. know and when i brought it up to higher ups in spartan they're like hmm. and that's all i got i i will say it until i'm blue in the face the best thing that ever happened to spartan was joe going on sabbatical in asia the worst thing that ever happened to Spartan was Joe coming back. As soon as he came mm -hmm. back, Spartan took a nosedive and it is continuing on its downward spiral. I don't, I, I hope I'm wrong. I don't see Spartan turn their luck around as long as Joe has decision-making powers. Yeah. When mm -hmm. I first got in with Spartan, the person I knew said, Joe is only in this so he can build it up and sell it off to the highest bidder. And as soon as he came back from Asia, he tried to make all of these changes. And this is where we're at now. Joe needs to sell the company to somebody who is actually wants to build a race brand. We can't afford to have Joe be the face of this company anymore because he keeps putting his foot in his mouth. And we can't afford for him to have decision-making powers because he continues to tank the value. Mm -hmm. It is. And like I said, the, the higher-ups do not care about how people are treated. Yeah. You know, is that when I, like I said, when I brought up all my issues, it was just like, eh. I'm like, okay. And that's why I will not, I will never pay for a Spartan race again. I will, like, I, and the last ones I did last year was because that's the, the last three races I had left. This year, like I said, I'll run with more heart than scars, but. Yeah. That's it. I'll do it to help people, but I ain't doing it. I'm, yeah. It's, I, and it's tough to say because you and me both, we were, I loved Spartan. I was a huge part of street team. I was doing three, four trifectas a year. And now I'm like, no. Yeah. They. They don't see their racers as anything other than dollar signs. And I mean, I've talked about it before. They don't care about the returning racers as much as they care about that new racer. All they want is your email so they can sell it off to their sponsors. Mm -hmm. That is the only thing they care about at this point. I have asked them time and time again, can I write programs specifically to help? the middle of the pack, the people that are looking to move up from 
you know, open to age group to elite. Oh no, that's not our demographic. It is your demographic. You sell season passes. Mm -hmm. You promote trifectas. It is your demographic. The more people that come back, the more people that ring a bell, the more they're going to come back again and they're going to bring a friend. They're going to bring their family. They're going to tell people you really need to try this. Oh my gosh. I finally beat the ape hanger. You have to come and try this. I need to do it again. I want to keep ringing that bell. But if you make the bells closer, nobody wants to ring them anymore. No, no. If you make it so everyone can do it, it's not a big thing when anyone does it. Exactly. You know, it's one of those things like when I first started, I was not in great shape. I'm not right now. I'm working on getting back in the shape I was supposed to be, but I loved it. I had a blast and I was, I would volunteer. I would get extra races. I would convince friends to come with me and give them those races. And I know people that have ended up doing 15, 20 races just because I convinced them to do one. Yeah. And now they're in the same boat we are where we're just like, okay. We've done the same thing for years. What, what's next? Yeah. So many people went to OCRWC because they were so sick of Spartan. Now Spartan buys them and people are like, well, what now? We were here because you're not Spartan. Now that you're Spartan, where do you want us to go? Yeah. And we're all just of, getting pushed out. That was one in their, their Facebook group. Someone said, why does everyone have such a big problem with this? And I'm like, because some of us were trying to get away from Spartan. And yeah. now Spartan just took another brand. Yeah. That we're gonna have to, that we're not gonna want to go do because it is Spartan. Yeah. I'm running World's Toughest Mudder this year and doing the Tough Mudder Endurance Series because I told myself I want to try the Endurance Series once. Mm -hmm. I want to see what World's Toughest Mudder is about. After that, I I don't know that I'll ever have a desire to do it again or not. I don't like what Joe continues to do with this sport so i'm gonna go right back and race all of the locals i will spend every weekend out in the midwest if i have to i want to see what you know fizo and world obstacle is going to continue to do with their world championships i want to see what we're going to keep doing with you know usa ocr i want to build the sport i want to get away from the brands because we even saw savage this year they decided we're no longer lacheing we're not going to make our rigs hard it's they are lessening the difficulty and it's like that's not what i'm in this for i loved savage last year because i did see a lache over water i did have to sit and spend 30 minutes on a rig fighting for my band. You're not going to give me that anymore. I'm going to go elsewhere that will. Mm -hmm. And there are brands that are doing it and it's all the locals. And those locals are what's going to continue to further build the FISO world obstacle stuff because they are figuring out their format and we're seeing mandatory completion out there. We're seeing racing in a whole different light and Spartan. We don't know what, what's going to come of them trying to work with Spartan. They're more focused on the sport and not the profit. And that's the way it should be. If you, yep, it's a cliche saying, but if you build it, they will come. I yeah. mean, it's true. You build the sport to what we want. We will continue to go. Yeah. You keep building it and make it easier and easier the athletes are going to walk away yeah so many already have and i asked joe that through the ocr buddy questions i mm -hmm. said what are you going to do to bring back the trifecta chasers and the spartans of you know yesteryears and he came back with some bs ants we're like oh well we all move on and we're just trying to rip a thousand or a million people off the couch. And we have 900,000 left to go. And it's like, you're not answering the question. We mm -hmm. want legitimate answers. We want to know how you're going to continue to promote the sport, how you're going to continue to promote training. We want to see you continue to 
build a sport without worrying so much on profits. I get it. You're a company. You got to worry about your profits. Mm -hmm. Maybe you should stop destroying your brand and your profits will increase. Because it's one of those things, like I have a friend, my friend here, you know, in, in Texas that I do the races or, you know, workouts with. The workouts she uses are old Spartan, like probably ones you wrote. <laughs> <laughs> The, the Spartan workouts that they would send out all the time yeah. and say, hey, yeah. here, do this. Yeah. And they don't even do that anymore. There's none of that no. like, hey, what do I need to get ready for this? Right. They used to try. It was all about how to not just get people in, but get them in and keep them. And like you said, yeah. now it's just he's so worried about ripping, you know, a million people off the couch that he doesn't care about the ones have already he's already ripped off right. the couch. So once you've stepped off the couch and you've signed up for a race, you don't matter anymore. Yeah. No. Literally, that was the title of the email I sent after my first obstacle specialist course. So you've ripped them out off the couch. What's next? They're gonna go right back to the couch. Mm -hmm. How are you gonna stop them? They're not, they don't care. We already got your email. We got your email and we got you to come and do one race. So we risked another person yeah. on the couch. doesn't matter that you went back to it. Ford already has your email. We don't need you anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It sucks because there, there, there was so much, there was a lot of, a lot of potential there. Yeah. You know who I'm not getting spammed by? All of the locals. No. I am a member of USAOCR. You know who's not spamming me? USAOCR. See, not to me. I do a lot of the locals. At least I did in, in Washington. But the problem was, is unfortunately, the, the and I get it, the, the OCR community up there isn't as strong after COVID as it was. And we lost yep. a lot of the locals. Yep. So, and that's one thing I'm trying to find out down here in Texas. Like, if I want to do triathlons, just about every freaking weekend I can do a triathlon down here. But I have Lone Star there. Spartans. I gotta yes, I gotta find them and start looking at, you know, the races down here. What kind of obstacle yeah. course races down here? Grit. Because I want to start doing local grit fitness. I know they're in Dallas. I don't know about Houston, but grit fitness. Yeah, because I want to start doing the locals down here and start doing stuff and you know get back into having fun with it and enjoying it. And I think that's been one of my biggest problems. You know, it's personal, but my biggest problems with a lot of my motivation. I had the issue with Ironman last year and then mm -hmm. the injury that I had to work through. And then I just kept using it. It's like, what am I training for? Yeah. I'm not doing Spartans. I'm not doing any of that. I'm not have a, don't have any urge to do them. And I think, you know, it took mentally a lot from me. And now it's time to, you know, once again, pull my head out of my ass. Yeah. And get my own motivation and do what I need to do. So I'm looking at like the new yard, figuring out, you know, exactly how to build what I need, laps, all that kind of stuff and get back into where I should be. Good. Thanks for listening to the BeastNet podcast. If you haven't done it yet, find us on Facebook, like and share the podcast. Give us a review on iTunes or Spotify. All these things will help to expand the show in the future. Don't forget to subscribe and let us know what you think and what you'd like to hear.